We know that the Earth is curved from a variety of experiments, which I detailed in detail last week in my last video, uh, running down some of the history of our observations and what we know and how we know it. But there are a lot of people who don't believe that the Earth is round. And we have to ask why. Like, there's all this weight of evidence. And it all fits together, like all the pieces of observations, all the lines of inquiry, all the possible tests, everything from direct observation to the Foucault pendulum to the uh, observability of stars to the behavior of the sun and moon across the seasons, like it all just fits. And so in order to say that the earth is flat, it all of these lines of evidence have to be wrong and you have to invent a lot of new physics like oh gravity works and makes things round for other planets but it operates differently on the earth well how uh the sun and the moon uh, aren't round objects that are uh we're orbiting or orbiting us uh they're spotlights they're shining lights well how are they generating their light how are they emitting their light how do they remain as discs what keeps them in orbit around the earth uh why does the coriolis force uh, change across the earth as it does why are some stars visible from the northern hemisphere and not the southern and vice versa uh, how does that actually work? What are the physical mechanisms? This is whenever I run into flat earth theories, they make a lot of statements, they make a lot of criticisms, uh, they do a lot of math, but they don't take a critical next step, which is to take their own ideas seriously, which is to say, okay, I think that the earth is flat and that gravity is different on the earth than it is for other objects in space. Okay. That's a you can make that statement. You're allowed to make statements in science. You're allowed to say whatever you want. But then you have to take the next step, which is how do you test that idea? What is the physical mechanism behind that idea? What do you do with that idea? What does that idea mean? What does it mean for gravity to be different on the earth? than the other planets? What does it mean for us to be flat? What is generating that flatness? You have to answer these questions and then you have to test those ideas. If you come up with some new explanation for why the Coriolis force is the way it is and make it behave on a flat earth, like you have some idea, you're like, aha, Coriolis force uh, changes directions because of you know, and insert your idea here. Well, how do you go about testing that? What is the experiment that you perform to conclude that it is true? What are the measurements that you take? Because we've taken lots of measurements going back millennia about the curvature of the earth. Well, what are the experiments? What are the data? What it, What is all the hard work that you put in to show that your new idea is correct and superior to the idea of a curved earth. That's why I don't think, the fact that people don't really do this, to me signals that flat earth concept isn't about the data. It isn't about scientific methods. It isn't about the evidence. It's about something else. It's about a lack of trust in science. It's about a lack of trust in scientists, which I don't blame people. Scientists have really screwed over lots of segments of the population before. Science has been a disservice to some people. Some people are isolated, um, uh, disenfranchised, don't have great opportunities, and they see science and scientists as part of the structural systems that keep them down. Science and scientists are part of the elite in a large, in a many ways, scientists are. We are part of the elite. We have elite educations. We went to elite schools. We work at elite institutions. We get paid a decent amount of money to sit and think big thoughts. We're, we're I mean, Scientists are by and large elite members of society. We're part of the problem that is keeping people down, keeping people disenfranchised, keeping people disillusioned. So a rejection of science is representative of, a, I believe, a larger 
rejection of institutions that are harming people. It's expressing a lack of trust in those institutions and it's, it's expressing a lack of trust in science. So what do we do? Well, we don't debate the facts, right? We, we don't debate the evidence because that's going to go nowhere. Because these people, people who believe that the earth is flat aren't believing it because the weight of evidence and uh, competing hypotheses and, and all that, they're believing it because they want to believe it. Because they don't trust what scientists are telling them. So how do we fix that? How about we start to build some trust? How about we give people a reason to trust scientists and the scientific method and the role of science in society again? How do we do that? I try to do it through through personal relationships, talking one on one, one on one, talking about things that are uh, neutral, talking about things that are not controversial, talking about things that we can agree about, and showing how it's not me as a scientist; it's centuries or millennia of evidence that leads us to this conclusion that we believe things not because we want to believe them or because we're trying to hurt someone. We believe things because that is what the evidence tells us to. There is no easy solution. I never engage one-on-one with uh, flat earthers. I never get into debates about that because it's not really about a flat earth. It's about a much larger, much more complex, much more uh, societal question than that. So if you encounter a flat earther who wants to get into a debate, who wants to have a chat, don't. Talk about something else. I hope that helps. See you next week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and go to patreon.com slash pmsutter.